How do you learn SAP CPI, Cloud Platform Integration? My name is Daniel Groves and I've been doing and creating SAP integration for over 15 years and I've been teaching SAP PI and now CPI for the last uh, five years. And a lot of this time I've had a lot of students that have come with feedback, questions, and this is what this is about. And this is how some of the challenges that, that I see people coming to me with a question, how do we solve this without really knowing all of the processes in place for this to work. So this video about what's the minimal requirement before you can actually start on creating your custom projects. So created this uh, blog that you can see here and there's a link also in the description to this and I hope you'll go through that one also. And this is just to give you some audio feedback about what this is and give you a little more insight in, on some of these things that that you have here. Um, so the first of is obviously you need to get access to the CPI system and I've created a blog that gives you shows you how you can sign up for the SAP cloud platform integration try it out uh, and run it in, in the cloud platform it's it's free there's a 30-day trial and apparently you can also extend it beyond that um th so and there's also a video a blog here that shows you a little differently how it can be done um it is in the cloud foundry environment and there are some limitations to what this can do compared to the current uh new environment but i would imagine in the beginning of, of next year 2020 the Cloud Foundry will be the, the default and the, the most uh, appropriate environment. So first up, uh, sign up there. If you do, do already have a CPI tenant in your landscape, you can use that one um, to, to get to learn these uh, things in a, a suitable manner. The th first thing I want to emphasize is this uh, Cloud uh, Platform ex Exemplar package that will give you a lot of examples about how SAP, uh, about some of the different challenges that, that you have. So the way you find this is once you have signed into your SAP system, you go to the discover page and here you search for, search for the cloud platform integration exemplar. If you click the link, you'll instead go to the the API management version of it here you can go in you can see all these different iFlows you can copy it to your own tenant and then start using it and this gives you a got a good example about the, for instance accessing header properties in your uh, in your path uh, and with XPath so you can open here get some insights about what's the content modifier it creates a property um, it runs some filtering, whatever. So, so this gives some, a good example about what you can actually do with the tool. So that's really the first one you need to, to get and assign to your system. It also provides, once you are going through some of the different design challenges, some ideas about how you can uh, go through the, and specify things more. Then, there are some complicated flows that you'll probably go through because the cloud exemplar package is just a broad overview that gives you or how do you say like a narrow scope that says if you have this problem this is how you solve it in these uh, real world examples uh, let's see if i've added some so let's see here so we'll go here i will search for Active Directory, and if we look at it, there's uh, some iFlows. I think this one is pretty good. Uh, the way it works and the way it structures, and I think from, from it, you can learn a lot. Uh, you may not be able to run it because you don't have a success factor system, but find some, some uh, iFlows in these packages that you have access to. You can try out and see how they work, uh, see how error handling, stuff like that works. So that's step number two. Then I will go through and create uh, your first 
iFlow. Um, there's a, a beginner's guide from SAP here, or you can take my free course, um, and here you'll get the first three lessons that will give you some understanding about the, the CPI, how you can create the iFlow, and a little about how you can actually monitor this. So I think this is really useful in a way of just create your own first iFlow, understand how you deploy, monitor, and view uh, all these information. Next up, and I think this is uh, really the key. So I've tried to, to condense and find what are the most important issues that you need to understand before you can do CPI development. And I've uh, tried to put them in here. So let's just zoom in here a little more. So the first is you need to understand the message structure. The CPI message has three components. There's a headers property that is used to save data that will be sent to, to different clients. There is a exchange property section or property where you'd have information regarding the processing that is just kept inside of the iFlow. And then you got something about the, the body where you have larger payloads in. There is the content modifiers, and this is really important because it allows you to do modification in the message really simple without having to do scripting or anything like that. Um, so you can uh, see if we got an example here. So here it has a content modifier, um, and here we are just setting in a body with some description and ex exception properties that is being pulled out and sent somewhere. Uh, so. And let's just check this one. It's also just creating some, some standard property for this information. Uh, there is this uh, blog about the camel expression. I really recommend that and uh, keep it in you. Uh, <laughs> and you can see the number of views here. It, it shows you a little about some of these different properties you can get out of out of uh, and make small modifications on it. It's not something that you can do a lot with, but it it can uh, allow you to to skip coding something uh, in it. Next up is you need to the request and reply and understanding how they work. Uh, so if we take a look at uh, our hero, then there should be some request reply beans uh, in it. So here we have a request reply. And we have set up to set up uh, specification with whatever uh, communication we're using, and we can see the the call that's used as some adapter specific uh, configuration that's being done. What is the the processing and stuff like that? So this gives you a lot more insight about um, yeah how we are calling out of the system, and that is what you would be doing anyway uh, a lot of times. So. It's about how do you actually create these, understand how they work and stuff like that. Uh, that's important. Um, you also need to know how to use the the password saving OAuth mechanism. So as you see here, we're calling out to a service. It has this credential. And what we will then need to do is we'll go into our CPI system. And then in it, we will then create security material, we will add it, uh, either public key, uh, user credentials, and then you can refer to it in, inside of the flow. And that means you are hiding the passwords and users so nobody else would actually be able to see these uh, contents. Um, there's also something about local flows and process direct that is really important. And if you look at the, the iFlow we had just before, see him, there's a lot of um, different ways it is processing. And so let's here have a look here. So here we have a, a main process. There's some uh, normal processes to do some uh, sending of data, there's a query builder process, and all of this is organized into different uh, substructures. And that would also simplify the code that you're creating if you can use these uh, these elements. Um, you need to understand 
the different logic like router splitter aggregator um, here you need yeah these are the ifs uh, for loops whatever that you need somehow to be able to, to process before you can actually create uh, good coding uh, the groovy script um, and the good thing about when you're creating groovy script it will give you a small snippet about how you can do it uh, if you just want some simple groovy script you can always also just use uh, plain old uh, java in it but uh, it's useful to to know a little more but i think in in beginning it's not very required that you know a lot about this i would say xslt is also really uh, important um, if you're doing any mappings in it you can obviously do it in groovy script the blog shows you how to do it and um, standard pi message mappings but i think for most new developers, if you don't know PI, then XSLT is the way to go because it's a lot easier to, to do, develop in and, and uh, <laughs> understand. Um, then we come to external parameters and this is also really critical because it will allow you to, to take an iFlow and here we can say we have externalized parameters and with these whenever we are going to deploy it we need to fill this in that's this means that if we're taking the same iflow we can take this code deploy it a lot of other places and just replace the urls and credentials that's being used in it and that makes it possible to actually deploy it to multiple locations so that's something you need to understand how you do and it is pretty simple you still start the with two brackets whenever you're filling in uh, information. You need to understand how you can set up uh, message monitoring, how you can understand, search a little more about messages because it is sometimes a little challenging to actually being able to see what you're processing of messages. And then fault handling is also important because there will occur errors and how do we actually extract them do some useful information with it um, and here these uh, these blocks would also give you some insight about what the, this is and i think as default it will take the the exception wrap it in a, some java object uh, that you then need to extract and figure out what are the the rules for it um you need to know the the online help and it is yeah, pretty good, I would say. It, it comes with a lot of uh, sections in, so... So you can go and search for whatever specific challenge do you have, content modifier basics or whatever, and it will give you a good idea about what you can do, what are the headers, properties, and stuff like that. So this is really a helpful resource that you have and in from your CPI system. Uh, you also have access to it from here and select online guide and then search and find the right uh, section for it. I would recommend that you pick up a course or book because the at least I've created a course and you can find it here at cpicourse.com. Um, the purpose of this has been to make it as simple for developers to get started. So we have created a lot of content that I had a developer that was able to, to use CPI a couple of hours after he used the course. So it's the course is like four hours and here's here will you get the, the basics part of what it covers. So we'll go through the 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 basics, the content modifier, calling services, mapping scripts, uh, some about the adapters, how they work. Uh, processing direct which is really good for modelizing things uh, or modelizing flow so you know how you can standardize things the cloud connector if you want to call on-premise services and we got some more advanced uh, sections about uh, data store error handling testing and uh, running PI on your PO system so that is definitely the one I would recommend but there's obviously other options. You can take the SAP standard course. Um, the standard course, it's a three-day course, and obviously you'd learn a lot being in an environment like that. 
Um, there's some open SAP courses you can take, and these are also uh, free, or these are free, and will give you a really good start about understanding what is going on in it. And then there's a cloud platform uh, book, the comprehensive guide that you can uh, pick up. And this also gives you a lot of reference material about creating different elements and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so whatever training fits the most, I would definitely recommend my own course. And that's where I've just been focusing on getting people from beginning to actually do integration work uh, for real. And then you can go in and start creating your own projects. Now you have the basis in place and then it's a lot easier to actually build on top of that because you know what are the bases, how do I design, how do you architect um, these things. And I also would recommend that you get a mentor that can help you and say, okay, give you some feedback on what you've created and say, well, this is good, this is not good. And then you would hopefully learn a little faster being able to, to solve some of the, the challenges that you run into. Um, I hope you like this video. If you liked it, please uh, hit the like button. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, and uh, I hope you to see you in some of the other videos. And uh, yeah, thank you.